Hello everyone, this is Charlie from Garden FL and today we are going to do an updated video on our Anonas that we have here at our house in Bradenton, Florida. Now it is actually March 1st today of the year 2021. So around this time of the year, the fruits of the Anonas Shea family actually begin to bud out. Many fruits like sugar apple, actimodia, alamas, custard apples, sour sops, cherry moyas, all of them are actually starting to bud out. So I hope this video can teach you when your Anonas will start budding out and showing early signs of green. Let's get started. So our first tree, a part of the Anona family we're gonna be looking at is the Rolinia. Now Rolinia is also known as Birbira, Rolinia Deliciosa, but I just like to call it Rolinia. As you see, the leaves on this Rolinia are kind of whitish to pinkish on some leaves. But overall, out of all my Anonas, the Rolinia was actually the first one to show new signs of budding. This actually started budding out last month, I believe the, the beginning of February of 2021. But as you see, it is actually pushing out still its new glossy leaves. And this is the new growth of the Rolinia. Now, Rolinia is actually one of my favorite Anonas that actually produces a big yellow fruit that I actually posted about many times on my Instagram account. Now, this tree stands about five feet tall. As you see, down at the base, this tree was actually grafted but I'm not exactly where it was grafted. I've been trying to look for the union, but I can't really see it. This looks like something, but I'm not sure if it could be, so. Overall, I'm really happy for this Berlinia's new growth. I really like how the, how the leaves look. They are actually really glossy and they just look really pretty when the sun is hitting on them. Now, I actually haven't fruited this Berlinia yet, but last year it was flowering. This year, I believe I'll let it grow a little more and maybe fruit it in two years just because I want this tree to really grow big and support the, the amount of fruits that I'll be trying to hand pollinate. Now, something about growing Rolinia in Florida is actually you want to plant it in a spot where it will be protected from the winds. I've actually had lost one due to too harsh of winds. So you want to make sure you plant it in a spot where it won't get bombarded by our Florida winds. As you see, I'm pretty protected over here. It's pretty uh, in a good spot. But as you see overall, the Rolinia's growth is actually very vigorous. And something about Rolinias too is they love water. So if you have an area of your yard that still gets good drainage, but it still can get pretty wet, I recommend you planting it there. But this tree still needs pretty good drainage. So overall, it is just a beautiful tree. Our next Anona we're gonna move on to is the Red Elama. Now this Red Elama I actually put in the ground last year and I purchased off someone off of Facebook Marketplace. As you see, this Elama stands about eight to nine feet tall, maybe even 10 feet tall. And as you see, currently you barely see any leaves on it because Elamas are actually very sensitive to the cold. They're kind of like a soursop, they'll drop all their leaves. And this is just to give you a better look of the Elama, how, how the base looks as it goes down. As you see, it branches out in many areas and it is actually grafted onto pond apple rootstock. As you see, if I dig below, you see it's very moist and being grafted onto pond apple, it actually takes floods very well and it's actually able to handle the moist soil because you know, the rootstock loves it, pond apple. This tree easily stands over 10 feet tall. Just a beautiful llama specimen. And the reason why I let this llama grow so big because a llama is known to be one of the biggest, it is not the biggest fruit of the, of the Nona family. I believe jungle soursop is actually the biggest, but this fruit nonetheless is very big and it needs a big tree. So right here is actually the beautiful new growth of the llama. Now, as you see this is the red alama because the red hues that the alama is displaying in the leaf this is easily one of my favorite anona leaves that the anona species actually gives out that the whole family gives out because just the, the complex colors that you see going on and also the fuzziness in the leaves as you see right there in the top portions as you see there's like a little fuzziness up top on the leaves that are actually super cool to look at but anyway this is actually not the only growth we got as you see right here is actually a better look at a deeper and more complex colored elama leaf that is actually budding out as you see it it really has a beautiful red color to it. I'm really liking how the llama looks. Now, this llama tree is native to Guatemala, I believe. And after doing some research, I learned that in their native environment, they actually grow very huge. And that is another reason why, why I really want this tree to just really grow. As you see, it's just budding out almost on every branch. So I know very soon this is gonna be a good season just to see how much a lot of foliage that grows out of this. But as you see, the llama did keep some leaves but a lot of them fell off as I expected they would. But as you see, I actually created a microclimate around the llama just because I've heard of them dying in 9B, you know, after not surviving some winters. And now I really like the microclimate that I created around this llama. It could be better, but also as the llama grows, it will get stronger and more resistant to the cold. But overall, I think I have a pretty good microclimate going on. As you see, it's 
under this oak tree that's very old and overall i want this along my bench to be huge and take most of the space up in this area well i'd even notice this new growth bud out here as you see it must have popped out today this one actually has a really intense red color but as you see overall, this tree is just ready to bloom and it's just such a huge alama tree. And last year, I actually got a few flowers on this alama and I was trying to fruit it last year, but I realized that I'm just gonna let this tree grow for another two to three years, even before I try fruiting it, just because I really want it to grow huge. And also I really need science from, from this alama because at my farm, I actually planted a bunch of pond apple rootstocks in the areas that flood at my farm. I planted about at least 50 pond apple rootstocks in the ground in areas at my farm that get a lot of water so in the future I'll be grafting llama onto there so it'll be cool to have you know a lot of llama trees at my farm but in able to do that I need a lot of cyan wood so that's why I'm also not trimming anything on my llama for a good two to three years so here's a better way we can see how tall the llama is actually it's right over here here's a tip and it just goes all the way down even taller than the mango I have so right there it's even taller than the bushes of of Mexican sunflower that I have right here uh, serving as chop and drop of course for the llama and everything else but it's pretty cool you know that I'm I really want this llama to really take up this area go really tall and be so strong to the point where I can climb it up the tree very easily to eventually harvest the fruits in the future so right next to the llama actually we have a lot of other anonas as you see right here I actually have a sugar apple as you see this sugar apple is even flowering right here you, you can see that little tiny flower it's right here so something you may notice the sugar apples when they lose all their leaves they kind of look just like a bare stick but it's okay because very soon they'll look beautiful and that's just one of the things you have to deal with when growing sugar apple here in florida is the defoliation process although some sugar apples may not lose their leaves depending on your microclimate and yard and situation as you see right here is actually a uh, anona reticulata which is a custard apple and as you see i believe this is a san pablo which is the red custard apple but as you see, custard apple is actually more stronger to the colder weather than both sugar apple and a llama and soursop because, because they barely lose leaves. And as you see, this reticulata is just, is still in dormancy. But as you see, this is what happens to the reticulata leaves. They just kind of go ugly and go black. But pretty soon they're gonna be coming out of dormancy. I actually know some people's reticulatus who are actually growing and actually have a seedling reticulata here that is actually growing. So I know very soon they'll be coming out of their dormancy. But this reticulata tree is actually very big and very thick this is something i really like too having reticulatus here at my farm just because in this small area i have a lot of anonas different anonas so i really am looking forward to the cross pollination in the future but as you see actually right next to the custard apple i actually have another sugar apple this one's actually coming along much better than the one you saw previously but actually this sugar apple isn't even the best one i have i have one that's much more far along the way in growing. But it's always just beautiful to observe the new growth on the anonas as time goes on, because as you know, seeing them without leaves is kind of a little hard, you know, after you just harvest a bunch of fruit from them, you're just really excited for next season. So it's really cool to see the start of next season. And also this means in Florida that we are leaving the cold weather. We technically already have beginning of March, but you know, this just means the rain and new growth on everything is coming along. So better times are ahead. So actually right behind this sugar apple, we actually have a soursop. Now this soursop I actually planted more in a little microclimate. As you see, I have a dwarf namwa banana growing on top of it. And these are all tall namwas. So eventually this soursop will grow very huge here. And this is another tree that I kind of am looking very forward to just because soursops when they're actually young, actually enjoy a little shade. And just like any other anona, they actually love water. So it's best if you can keep these soursops actually really well hydrated. And that's another reason why I kind of planted them back here. So, so the soil kind of gets shaded and I'm also making sure just to keep this soursop very well hydrated. As you see, the base of the soursop is actually not too thick. And believe it or not, yesterday I actually had to repair it because I believe my cat or something jumped on this limb right here and snapped it but it was still connected to the cambium layer by a pretty good amount so i'm gonna leave this on here for about maybe six months to a year you know in six months i'll take it off to check how it's doing but as you see the growth on this branch is not really affected whatsoever so that was mainly why i decided to attach it and not remove it completely but as you see this sour is just doing really good 
And something I really like about these soursop leaves is they're actually very aromatic. So as you're watering your soursop, you usually get a good scent of uh, the leaves. If you don't know, soursop leaves kind of smell a little bit like a citrusy anona smell. If you have a lot of anonas, you kind of know that anona smell, but it's kind of a little elevated. So I really like seeing these soursop leaves growing out. And unlike other anonas, these leaves actually are very shiny when they first come out. So that's how you're able to recognize them compared to other anonas like sugar apple, cherry moya, atemoya, custard apple, and a llama leaves is just because the leaves are super shiny. So as you see moving on, we're actually gonna go to the front of my yard where we actually have the cherry lata as well as some other nadai sugar apples. And I actually have a lot of sugar apples in pots. As you see, almost all the sugar apples in my pots are budding out again and growing. Now, if you guys didn't know, sugar apples actually go super well in pots. So part of my thing when I'm at home is I love to put sugar apples everywhere. And sometimes I just don't have the space to plant them in the ground. So if you're able to buy a really big pot, like I believe this is a 25 gallon pot, but they're actually able to grow in here and fruit very well. Now, all these sugar apple trees, I actually fruited and ate from last season. As you see, this is what the leaves look like when you don't remove them yourself and when they don't fall off because winter. But if you want to, you can just remove them like this. As you see, they kind of get very burnt and ugly. And a lot of people tend to say, oh, why are my sugar apples looking like this around winter time? Well, it's just because naturally when the cold weather comes, they just get really damaged because sugar apple and really any fruit of the Inonashe family is a tropical fruit tree. So when the cold weather comes, they just get really ugly. But there's no need to worry because around March time you're gonna see this beautiful new growth That's why so as we walk around my property You're just gonna see a lot of sugar apples in pots and they look really pretty and ornamental when they're fruiting But nonetheless if you don't have this space, I highly recommend you putting uh, sugar apples in pots because it's just much easier to manage so right here on the side of my yard i actually have another sugar apple in a pot but this one actually has the most significant blooms out of any sugar apple that i have here yet and that is typically normal if you have a lot of sugar apples you know usually one of them is going to be better than the other one or early starting but as you see i just really like growth on this this is actually the nadai vietnamese sugar apple so I just really like the new growth on this one. As you see, the growth structure too is actually really nice looking. It's actually very compact. And it's also in the, I believe this is the 25 gallon container. Overall, this tree was very productive last year. I got about four big Nadai Vietnamese sugar apples off this tree. So overall, it's just very beautiful and I'm really happy that the sugar apples are already growing considering that it's so early in the year. And this sugar apple tree I actually grafted on purple sugar apple. So we're gonna see if that takes. Now actually right beside the sugar apple, I actually have more anonas. This is actually another custard apple. And I believe it's the San Pablo one as well. As you see, they barely lost their leaves. So we're just waiting on these ones to butt out like the other anonas. But this one too is just a really pretty tree going all the way down. It's actually pretty good size, but this season we're actually gonna let it root and well, I'm not sure if I'm gonna let any unknown as a flower this year, to be honest, because I really want them to root better. That's something I learned this season is I was fruiting my known as whenever they had the flower, when I recently just planted them in the ground, but it's better to just let them, you know, root for a few years until they flower and until the tree is actually well connected to the earth, they can support just bigger and healthier fruit. Oh wow, something I just noticed is this custard apple is actually breaking out, but I didn't notice that before, but so that's cool. So actually, yes, this one is actually breaking out. And actually right beside this custard apple, we have another soursop. Honestly, I'm not sure if I'll keep this soursop here because this soursop every year kind of has a weird disease. As the leaves grow typically and mature, they get some weird bump on the back of them. So we're gonna see if this year, if it does it again. But but honestly, on, on the soursop's case, I actually haven't even tried to cure it. So maybe this year I'll try to cure it and we'll keep it. But as you see, another reason why I'm considering removing it, in the past, I actually started scraping it <laughs> when I was trying to learn how to graft. And I did some type of graft, but it did not work out well at all. And as you see, it kind of looks ugly. <laughs> but overall, this soursop is actually very thick. It's actually the biggest soursop that we have on the property and my mom actually planted this one when we first moved in here so but as you see it's not really a beautiful soursop but i might leave it we'll let it grow or i might just use it as rootstock for something else but as you see overall this one is just coming out of new growth everywhere and if it comes out with that weird disease like i last year i'll definitely post about it and maybe ask you guys for any suggestions or i decide to chop it down or whatever i decide to do with it and actually right beside that one i have actually another custard apple so i actually have two custard apples right here and then as you guys know the ones we saw in the middle of my property now this custard apple as well is actually a really good size as you see just beautiful and these custard apples are still very young 
compared to other custard apples I've seen in other people's orchards that are mature. Custard apples actually get pretty big, so I'll still let these grow for the first few years. And these actually, when I planted them, were flowering, and I was actually trying to hand pollinate them. So none of them actually accepted fruit. So maybe that is why these need to grow. Maybe they, I think overall, all my known is just need to connect for the first few years before I try hand pollinating them like I did the previous year. Because if you guys didn't know, my known is actually did suffer somewhat. I actually stunted them a little bit more than I should have. And, but it's okay because this year we we'll actually let them grow and reconnect. So guys, I wasn't kidding when I said I actually have a known is everywhere around my yard in these big pots as you see these are just other sugar apples that are budding out and as they grow i'm actually learning how to form a better sugar apple canopy and just base overall so that's why i kind of like to have a bunch of sugar apples just so i learn how to properly prune them and care for them and obviously i love this fruit so much so i want a lot of sugar apples in the future so these are two new atemoyas that i actually planted right here in the front of my yard now these are actually ppc atemoyas also known as pek pek chong now this atemoya was developed in thailand and it's actually a very big thick and beautiful atemoya now i actually was able to get my hands on three atemoyas this past spring they were actually one of the best sugar apples or fruits of the unknown family that i ate now, as you see, the PPC is actually pushing out this beautiful new growth. And I'm really happy because actually two out of four PPC trees that I had were actually at my farm. And about a month ago, I actually decided to bring two of them home because I actually wanted to bring to home just because the soil here at my house is actually very it's very organic it's not just all sand like my farm also i'll be able to irrigate these much better which atemodias or really any plant of the nona family just loves so i'm really happy to see that the ppc is growing here now this tree i probably won't fruit for another three to four years just because also i want this tree to be big and mature and able to fruit the big ppc fruit now this ppc actually held it's held some leaves through the winter we had which is actually really cool because atemodias being uh, being crossed with cherimoya are actually able to withstand colder temperatures so atemoyas in florida actually do really good so overall i'm happy that this ppc atemoya is just growing very well as you see ppc atemoya and as you see this was also grafted and going up it's just budding out in more than one area it's budding out right there as, as well as right here which is the main bud point so i actually have two ppc atemoyas one planted right here and then the other one not too far away here is another ppc atemoya and this one was actually struggling. This one was actually struggling at my farm. Now the reason why they were struggling at my farm is because I wasn't able to irrigate them as much and the sun was just really bad in Punta Gorda at the time. As you know, we've all been in a dry season, but we're basically leaving it very soon. So I'm just really happy to get these atemoyas here because the ones at my farm actually aren't budding out as much as these just because I'm able to keep these atemoyas much more irrigated. So I'm just really happy to be growing PPC atemoya here at my house. Also because I'll be able to grow these trees out really large and, and use a sign wood to graft onto all my Anona rootstocks that I have. So actually bringing up the topic of Anona rootstocks, really quick we're going to see the Anona rootstocks socks that I have and I've been raising all of my anona root socks from seed. Now when I say anona root socks they're a mixture of cherimoya seed, sugar apple, and atemoyas. So these are all seedlings of AP atemoyas fruit that I ate from California. My friend C Taco C sent me a lot of atemoyas last spring and a lot of them were AP atemoya and amongst these are some Geffners but a bulk of them are actually AP atemoya. As you see all the root socks are just growing beautifully. I'll probably let these grow for another year before I even touch them and actually I planted some of them in my yard here in Britain so we're gonna fruit them and see actually what happens now there's actually a high variability amongst these anona seedlings these atemoya seedlings just because I've heard that some atemoyas revert back to either a superior sugar apple or cherimoya now you can actually tell some of these are atemoyas very easily just because of their leaf shapes as you see some of them are more circular just like a cherimoya and then some of them are just like an atemoya leaf more pointy and kind of bigger so as you see overall I'm just really happy on how all of the Anona root socks are and these are not just the end of it guys I actually have a lot more root socks back here but they're actually much smaller and these root socks will actually will leave growing for another year or two as well so here are just a little preview of what of some Anona root socks I have now these I believe are all cherimoya most of these root socks actually right here are cherimoya as you can tell the leaves are actually very rounded just like a typical cherimoya will be but as you see a lot of these Anona root socks are growing out once again so it's just a really good sign to see that you know I have 
have a lot of rootstock prepared for all the grafting I'll do just because I have a lot of anuna species, you know, cherry lada, llamas, atemodias, you know, a lot of good anuna species that I really want to spread around here. So these will be the rootstocks I'll be grafting on and eventually selling to some of you guys or, you know, just planting out at my farm just because at my farm I need a lot of anunas. Just continuing on right here. As you see, we had a really harsh winter, so a lot of the sugar apples, which these are, lost all their leaves but these sugar apples are actually growing back really nicely so in the future we're going to repot them most likely this spring they'll all be repotted so they grow much better bigger so just in the front of my yard as you see you have a bunch of sugar apples now these are actually the nadai vietnamese as you see nadai sugar apple nadai vietnamese variety and i really like this sugar apple variety because it's very chewy has a very good seed to meat ratio and it's just easy to peel off the skin it reminds me a lot like the ppc at the modia but just smaller but that's why i also love the ppc because it's just a huger to me like a, almost like an endive Vietnamese sugar apple, but just bigger and meatier. So right here in the front of my yard is actually where I have the cherry lada. As you see right there is where we just saw all the sugar apples in those uh, five gallon pots. But here is where this cherry lada tree stands. Now, believe it or not, the cherry lada tree is actually the best anona tree that I have here on my house that I barely shed a leaf through the winter. Now, we actually got down to 38 or even lower, I believe, in Bradenton. Now, Bradenton, Florida is actually on the west coast, but it's actually, we're actually very near the water. As you see from my house, you can actually see the ocean right there. The water is actually moving. And we're actually south of the ocean. So, so I believe the people on the south actually get a little warmer. So overall, I'm just really happy that my cherry lada tree was actually able to, to stay so pretty. Barely even lost a leaf. As you see from the base of the cherry lada, it is still doing very well. And this is actually grafted on to pond apple rootstock. But overall, the cherry lada is just doing really well. This season, I'm honestly not too sure if I'll let it fruit. Only because I know how much I want this tree to grow big. And only because I know, only because the fruits that I did eat from this cherry lada were so delicious. And overall, I just really want a big cherry lada tree so I can fruit a lot of fruits. And also so I can use a lot of the sign wood to graft other cherry lada trees and spread cherry ladas around the community. Now, one of the reasons why a cherry lada tree also kept their leaves and almost stayed perfect throughout winters is because of their genetics. Being that it is Cherimoya and Anona reticulata, which is custard apple. And custard apple, as you know, was the one that barely even lost a leaf. I actually have a custard apple planted right here, not too far away from the cherry lada. As you see, these are the custard apple, the Anona reticulata leaves. As you see, they're a little slimmer compared to cherry lada, but as you see, mostly evergreen on the tree, just like the cherry lada, barely lost a leaf. But the cherry lada is basically has its genetics plus a cherimoya, which a cherimoya, as you know, is very cold tolerant. And here's just a comparison of the leaf sizes. And something I noticed too is that the Anona reticulata is actually much thinner than the cherry lata. And I think that's just because the cherry lata has a length of the reticulata leaves, but also has the, you know, the roundness of the cherry moya. So it's cool to see kind of how the genetics play out in these anonas. So overall, that is a pretty good scope on the anonas I have here at my yard. Now I actually do have a lot of other anonas that I didn't cover, but as you see, I actually have a lot of them just planted around in random areas. As you see, some of them actually died back randomly, so I had to cut them back as you see, but they're actually pushing out new growth right here. And actually this is one in my front of my yard that actually had fruited very heavily. So this season I learned that I'm gonna let them grow, you know, really get the roots established here for the first two years. And then we're gonna see more about fruiting them. But overall, I'm just really happy that the anonas are growing back very strong. And overall, growing sugar apple in Florida is actually very easy. It's probably one of the easiest fruiting crops that you can grow. And actually one of the best tasting ones too. But as you see, sugar apple, I really just utilize planting all around the yard. And we're just gonna quickly walk by a few more that I want to show you right here. As you see, this is also a Nadai Vietnamese. But as you see, you can basically plant sugar apple anywhere you want in your yard. And you can also keep them very well maintained and trimmed. These sugar apples actually love pruning, so they're actually very manageable to have in your food forest. So thank you guys so much again for watching this video on how the Anonas are doing, on how they're budding out. I hope you really like this video. Right here we have the Relinia being hit by the sun. It looks really good and I really can't wait to let these Anonas just grow this season and to see how much they grow next year. Thank you guys so much again for watching this video. If you wanna see an update on a certain fruit family I have in my garden, please let me know. I love growing all types of tropical fruit. And if there's a tropical fruit tree that you recommend that I should add to my garden, please let me know in the comments below. I love to take all recommendations and I just also love to have such diversity here in the garden. It really makes me happy just you know to walk through my garden and see all the tropical fruits that I have, you know, besides anonas or, or, you know, I believe that you should really mix it up and have kind of a taste of everything in your garden. So thank you guys so much for watching this video again. I hope you liked it. Please stay tuned for the next video and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye now.